Jennifer said, we are covering our 21st century learning at Steve Boys Middle School. We've kind of had a journey through the last um, five years. Of course, I know a lot of others are doing the same thing. We're trying to integrate technology across the curriculum and seeing what we can do for our students. So we are just going to kind of go over some of the things that we did. Um, how did we get there? Um, the first thing is that we, I have to think of the, the years, the 2008, I think, is the first year that we did the EETT grant, which is Enhancing Education Through Technology. Um, we've had an ongoing process. Even though we are low income, um, we have the support from our administration, our school board, and we're constantly trying to seek out um, anything that we can advance in technology and use in our classrooms. When we first started with the grant, we only had, um, we had a couple computer labs, we had the computer classes, and we had two laptop carts that the teachers could use before we got the grant. Um, and of course, you know how that works. Technology is wonderful when it's working properly. When we first started, uh, the feedback we got from teachers was, it doesn't work. It never works. I roll that card down here, the kids try to log on, and forget it. I'm just not even going to do it because it's not worth it. So we decided that we would start doing things that we could. Um, when we first got the EETT grant, we got the polyvision boards. We got um, teacher laptops. You know, we started out, each teacher had one desktop computer in their classroom, and that was it. So they kept their desktop computer, but we got the polyvision boards. Um, they got the laptop cart that connected to that polyvision board, and then teachers were able to take that kind of anywhere in their classroom. Um, I'm trying to think what else. So, does everybody know en enhancing education through technology? Anybody else have that in their schools? The EETT grant? Okay, so I know several of you do. Um, it's a Title II D grant. Um, like I said, we got the polyvision boards. We got laptop carts. We got clicker responders for in the classrooms that, that students could use. They provided me as an instructional coach. So my job, once we got all of the things, was to be pushed into um, the classrooms. So the teacher said, OK, we got all of this technology. What do we do with it? So we first focused on integrating into their classrooms. What are you already teaching? And how can we make it better? Or how can we bring in some of the, the technology skills also? OK, in 2010, we applied for and received another round of the EETT grant. And this time, we purchased the digital document cameras for each of the core classrooms. And we also received flip cams for each of the classrooms. We also um, purchased sets of the CPS responders for each of the sixth and seventh grade um, teams. And in our building, um, we have sixth, seventh, and eighth grade, and we have three teams for each of those grades. So that was a pretty significant number. Um, and at that point, we also received another two laptop cards for um, the entire building. So that brought our numbers up. Um, throughout the 2010-2011 school year, we continued to have um, Nicole as our technology coach going into the classrooms, helping plan and implement projects, trying to do a little bit more with the cross-curricular things. Um, very fortunate to have a technology coach. That wasn't something that a lot of people had. And I think at that point, kind of running ragged, everybody was in dire need of that. And some of the, in my opinion, and not being disrespectful to them, but some of the older faculty who had never used any of that technology, I think, were clamoring for her attention. And I think that was very beneficial just because having that resource and having someone that they could go to, um, hugely beneficial, making them more comfortable using that. And I think even long after um, you were there still trying to use that in the classroom, and even now that she's back as a classroom teacher, constantly getting phone calls, constantly having people trying to have but her But that's still also there. where we have the librarian over here, Mr. Lebron. So <laughs> she has also been tapped to kind of help, and, and so yeah. she was my resource as well, and, um, and continues to be. So I'm back in my classroom 
it was a it was a big transition the first year. This is my second year back in the classroom, but uh, of course, when you're trying to teach a class and you have the phone ringing off the hook because somebody's something isn't working or help me, I don't know what to do. Um, Julie feels a lot of those calls now as well. So uh, we do still tap into our library a lot, but um, at the time when we had the laptop carts, we were using um, the Google Calendar as a way for people to um, sign those out. That was a new system. And we had time allotted um, for technology during in-service days. And at that time, we were using a lot of our staff um, to be experts in teaching others and providing assistance. Um, when the grant was completed, we realized, luckily, we still had money left over. So at that time, we were able to purchase, I think it was 50 iPads um, and with cases to make two classroom carts that the teachers could um, again, sign out, and we also um, got vouchers to do apps at that time. So we were very lucky with the EETT grant. That was um, huge in you know, progressing a school that was low income. I'm not sure what your demographics are, but at over 45% free and reduced lunches, I mean, this is, this is big for our students to have access to that. So. Um, and then, like they said, 2011, 2012, we no longer had the grant no longer the instructional coach. So what do we do? We still had iPads and boxes. So it was decided to have a team of seven te technology teachers. They were each given iPads, um, they were given training, and then, and Julie was one of them, and then they actually went out into the school, onto the teams, and showed other teachers how to use these iPads. Hey, here's a really neat English idea. You might want to try it in your room. You sign out the iPads and you have it ready to go. Um, they also have apps that are available. The technology team will look and see, oh, I would like to purchase this app. They look at the app and they'll say, approve or disapprove, and buy it for you. But then we were very lucky. Um, in 2012-2013, our uh, director of federal programs applied for the Rural and Low Income School Grant, which was part of the Title VI Part B funds. And with that, we were able to receive 160 iPads. And they were then given to all the core teachers. So now all the teachers in our school have access to an iPad. And again, we can go to the technology team for extra help. Julie on Tuesdays and Thursdays in the library, she'll give me a little extra training. And if I want an app purchased, they can look at it and purchase for me to use in the classroom. So we're very, very lucky that way. Did you receive <coughs> carts for your iPad? Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we have two carts that we, we sync. So um, part of the thing was, okay, now we have the stuff. So what do we do with it? And that's what the teachers were saying. Okay, you got us the stuff. We don't know how to use it. We don't know how to use it in our classroom. So like she said, Earlier, we did a lot of professional development. We did a lot of train the trainer models. When we got the iPads, the seven of us did Apple training with the Apple folks. They came in and trained us, and then we did professional development on an in service with all of our teachers. So we worked with them. Of course, that was when we first got those carts, and they were all excited about them, but then some of them said, you know, well, I don't have an iPad to take home with me to play with. Like, I still don't feel that comfortable. So it's been a great increase of use since they got their own, and they can see what they can do with them and how they can improve their instruction. Um, we did after-school training. We did Tech Tuesdays. We utilized, we have in our district um, contractual hours in our contract right now. So we have one hour every month. We call it teacher detention, but we have to stay <laughs> for teacher detention. But it is a time that we can use then for these trainings. So whenever we need to get together and say, okay, what are you using? What do you need help with? And then we can give more resources. Um, in addition to that, we started looking at our technology curriculum. We have. Just on Tuesday after school, we would stay and do training for an hour or two on various tools that they could use or things that they could use. Nicole would send out an email to the teachers and she'd say, this Tech Tuesday, we're going to look at apps. And so then the teachers would know, 
okay, well, if I want to find more apps, then I'll come to this Tuesday. And the next one might be how to use we did photo discovery. Story. Yeah, we did discovery yeah. ed. We did, you know. Yeah, so she would pick a different topic, and then that way the teachers could come for more individualized. And what was your participation like from the faculty? When, when it first started, it was lower. As it kept going, it, 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 it depends. I had people that were hit or miss. Um, the way that it, we had it set up, they could get Act 48 credit for it. They had to have three hours to get the Act 48 credit. So, I mean, they would come to, you know, several. So I had, you know, maybe 10 folks that got the Act 48 credit. They did all three hours to get the Act 48. I had some that were just in and out. Like, I, this is the only one I want to come to, so I'm not coming to the other. I don't care about Act 48. But so. it, one of the nice things is for the teachers that didn't have a lot of technology experience, it gave them a little more comfort to be able to come and ask questions instead of asking in front of the entire staff. Instead of, you know, having to feel like they didn't know it in front of their students, they could come to a smaller setting and ask a lot more questions. Um, I teach, of course, seventh grade communications. We have a sixth grade computer class and we also have um, an eighth grade um, communications too. So we looked at that curriculum and we decided okay, what skills do we want to have the kids start with in sixth grade, seventh grade, and eighth grade, but then we also look across the curriculum, what are they doing in sixth grade, what do they do in seventh grade, and what do they do in eighth grade, so that across the three years, it is our, our job, basically, to give them as many skills as we can throughout those three grades. So we added um, the Lego Line Storm Robotics into the eighth grade computer class, but we looked at, at all of those things and, and what other skills could we cover in the computer classes that are already being covered, you know, across the curriculum. Um, we have, it's just a 12-week course. We also do all of the internet safety, of course, in the, in, the, in the computer classes. This year, we are covering some of the iSafe with the E-rate <coughs> funding we have to, to document. So our district did go with the iSafe. So we have different um, leveled instructional pieces that we do for that. Um, each set, sixth grade focuses on typing skills, PowerPoint, things like that. When they get into seventh grade communications, I have a television studio, so we use green screening, we do video, um, they're doing stop motion animation, we do scratch, which is simple programming. I give them a little bit of everything. We do Photoshop, digital photography, and things like that. Um, the other thing, you know, like she said, with the technology team, there are seven of us on that team, and we work together. The student or the teachers get to make a proposal if they want an app. So it comes to, it goes to our curriculum director first, and then she sends it to the technology team. We have um, rubrics that we have to fill out. Is this something that we think is going to be beneficial and have an instructional purpose in our classrooms? Especially with the iPads, we only have 16 gigs of, of memory, so you need to, we need to watch what we put on. Or, can we find an app that's better? Do we have one that, that's free compared to one that's paid, or is the paid version better? So, I mean, we kind of all work together, and it's an ongoing process. We're always learning and always learning and moving on. So. And, and that, with the, the apps, it's been interesting to see the teachers who we thought maybe would have an issue looking at apps, who actually are going out and finding the apps and sending the requests in. Um, we had five from one of our teachers, and we kind of looked at, like, never expected that teacher to be that interested in it. But once they got on the iPad, and once they realized some of the things they could do with it, they're like, oh, this is really going to enhance our teaching. And now, I do all the scheduling for all the labs and the laptop cards and the iPad cards. So, it, I'm constantly, they're, they're never in-house. And so, Nicole and I do the updating on them, and so we... <laughs> We're always trying to figure out, okay, what day can we grab them from somebody that we can stay after school to get them updated because they're signed out all the 